This is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on the static keyword in Java. So um, I'm in Eclipse and I've got my main program here and I'm going to start by creating a class up here which I'll call thing. And I'm going to give thing to member variables. Um, I'll make them both public and um, let's give this a name variable of type string. And I'll also give it a another variable of type string called description. Now, um, description, I'm going to make static. So before the string type here, I'm going to put the keyword static. And we'll have a look at what the difference is between this and this. So if I, um, oh, and by the way, I should mention that um, usually if you have um, member variables, most of the time you declare them private or protected, which we'll look at later in this series of tutorials. But just for this tutorial, I'm going to make them public um, to keep things simpler. So um, I'm going to declare a couple of thing objects here. So let's have thing1 equals new thing. And I'll have a thing2 thing equals new thing. Now, with the um, name variable here, each thing object has its own copy of name. So I can set um, thing1.name equal to Bob and thing2.name equal to Sue. And of course, I can display those with a sys out. So um, let's say thing1.name dot, thing dot and sys out control space thing two dot name and of course um, if I run this it's going to say Bob and Sue and the difference with the static um, member variable here is that um, each object does not get its own copy static member variables um, also known as class variables belong to the class and there is only one copy because there's only one class so if I want to access description, I um, access it via the class. I type the class name, description equals I am a thing. And um, I can do sys out on that in the same way, thing.description. So um, variables like this, uh, which aren't static, are called instance variables because every separate instance or example or in other words, every separate object of the type thing gets its own copy. Whereas uh, static variables like this are um, often known as class variables because they are associated with the class. So if I run this, you'll see down here it says, I am a thing. And um, let's also have a look at static uh, methods versus instance methods because if I create here a public show name, let's say, I can do in, in here sys out name, and so I'm just outputting the name using this instance method, and um, I can replace my sys outs down here with a call to thing one dot show name, and um, I should put the return type here void and thing two dot show name like this. So if I run that, um, it's just going to do the same as before. I'm just calling these methods to output the name for each object. Now, as you might suspect, um, with uh, a static variable, let's just maximize the editor here, control M in Eclipse. With a static um, method, sorry, you can access it via the class. So if I write public static void, um, let's say I'll call it show, in, show info, then um, I'll just do a sys out in here and I will put hello just for the moment. So to run this show info, um, I just say thing, the class name in this case, dot show info like that. So I'm accessing it via the class. Let's get rid of this sys out. 
and if I run this now, it's um, it's going to output hello. So I'm running this static method here via the class. Now there are a couple of um, things to bear in mind here. Um, one thing is that um, static methods can um, access static data because both belong to the class. So if I say in here, I want, if I output description, the static output, the static variable in my static method, that's going to work. So this is going to say I am a thing just from calling my static method here. But I, um, static methods can't output um, instance variables like name. This gives me an error which says cannot make a static reference to the non-static field name. And that makes sense if you think about it because the static data, the static instance variables exist before you've even created any objects from your class. So how can this know about the name which is associated um, with particular objects? It can't. So um, let's just put won't work. On the other hand, the instance variables can access the static data because, um, sorry, the instance methods can access the static data because, um, of course, by the time you've got objects, of course, you've already got the class. So methods attached to the objects naturally can access data attached to the class. So in this show name, which is um, an instance method, a normal sort of method, I can I can output description here. So let's just put a plus in there and some punctuation. And if I run this, um, I'm going to get, so this is from the static method here, I am a thing, and the instance methods are outputting I am a thing Bob, I am a thing Sue. So the instance methods can access the static data. Now, um, you might be wondering what you can use static for, and um, there are several uses that spring to my mind, and I'll, I'll show you some of those here. Of course, one, um, one use is that if you've got a method that takes some arguments and outputs some data, but never deals with the instance data of the class, then you could uh, make it static because um, you only need really instance methods if they somehow deal with the instance data of the class. Um, but there are, there are a few other interesting uses as well. Um, so let's say, um, let's have a look at um, one typical use um, of static, which you can find um, in many places in Java, but a good example is the um, math.class standard part of the Java library and the math.class has constants attached to it, for example pi. So if I output math.pi you can see that I'm accessing a, a variable here, well a constant actually, I'm accessing some um, data via the class math which um, might lead you to suspect correctly that it's static. So if I run that, um, here we get pi being output down here, just from this. So let's see how we can make our own um, constant in the same way. So um, here, if, if I want a constant, um, so the kind of thing that I want to achieve is, I want to be able to say something like, um, the name of my class, which is thing dot, um, let's say, I don't know, thing dot lucky number, or this could be a string, sorry, lucky number, or whatever you like. Now, see, pi is a constant, which means I, I can't reassign it. I can't do math.pi equals uh, three. Um, if I save that, it, um, let's comment this out as well. So this will give me an error. 
um, the final field mass.py cannot be assigned. Um, it's constant, meaning it's unchangeable. And um, constant values, um, kind of by tradition or convention in Java, are represented by uppercase letters. And that's why I've written this in uppercase. And just to give it, make it more readable, I've put an underscore in the middle there. And to implement that, so it's going to be a public variable, public because it's accessed outside the class. And we're going to look at public um, protected and private in future tutorials. And I'm going to make it of type int, although it could be anything you like, int. And I'm going to call it lucky number, lucky number, like this. And um, I'm going to make it, I want to access it via the class thing.lucky number. So it's going to be static, so public static int. And I'm also going to make, declare it final. So I'm going to put the final keyword in here. And final is Java's version of constant. Um, and that just ensures that you can't reassign a value to this. And if you have a final field, um, you've got to assign a value to it when you create it. So here I need to write equals, and then let's just set it equal to seven because um, after you've created the variable, you will no longer be able to assign a new value to it because it's final, it's constant. So um, you can see that this will now work. And if I run that, it's going to say seven down here. So um, I've just got this constant value, which as I say, could be a string or whatever that's attached to my class. And you see that all over the place in Java, like in the, the color class in string or jframe.exit on close and, you know, math constants. Um, and it's, it's absolutely all over the place. Um, another really good use of static is to count the number of objects that you are creating. So um, let's create, let's have in here um, a uh, just for simplicity, I'll make it public again, but normally this would be private and you'd access it via a getter, but I'll say public int count and write, and yeah, I'm going to make that static. So it's attached to the class, not to the particular objects. And I'm going to initialize it to the value zero. And I'll give thing a constructor. So I'll say public thing, no return type for the constructor. Now this constructor will be run every time you create a instance of thing. In other words, whenever you do new thing, it's going to run whatever code I put in here. So I could take that opportunity to increment count. And because count is static, it belongs to the class, not to the objects. And that means that there is only one count, which is shared between all objects. So, um, any time an object increments count, there's only going to be one copy of count and it's incremented for all objects in effect, um, because as I say, it's attached to the class. So um, here I've done, well, let's first of all output it up here. I'll say sysout thing.count. And as I say, normally you'd have a getter called get count probably. And, um, and then let's, let's say here, I'll just put some text in and say, um, before creating objects, count is like this. And I'll put a plus in there. And let's just copy that. And I'll move it down here after I've created my objects. So if I run this, it's going to say, um, scroll up a bit. Before creating objects, count is zero because um, when I output um, thing.count up here, it's um, it's just at its initial value of zero. But every time I create an object, it runs the constructor and increments count. So after I've created my objects here, each one of those will increment count. And then I'm outputting thing.count again. 
and it's saying after creating objects count is 2. So this is handily counting the number of objects that I've got. And that brings me to one um, final interesting use of count, which is um, assigning an ID um, to each of your objects, a unique ID. Because supposing here I create an instance variable, uh, not, a, not a class, not a static variable, but an instance variable, um, and I'll call it public int ID. And um, just repeat, um, these shouldn't really all be public, but they should be private or protected, but this will do for this tutorial. And um, I won't initialize ID here. Actually, your instance variables in Java are initialized to default values, so this will be zero anyway to start with, but that doesn't matter. I want ID to be um, unique for each object, so the first object should have ID, let's say, naught and the second object ID 1 and so on. And all I have to do to get that to work is um, I, can as I can assign the value of ID and every object has its own ID because it's not static, it's an instance variable. So I can assign that to the static variable count. And the static variable count um, being shared between all objects is of course incremented every time you create an object. But this will keep a kind of record of whatever count was um, at the time the constructor ran um, for each object. Each object has its own ID, um, but there's only one shared count. So that means that if I say um, down here, let's say, um, well, uh, I could change show name. Um, so. Yeah, so in my show name method here, I could say um, object ID and um, plus, whoops, plus, and let's add on ID. And yeah, but I have some punctuation in here and a space, and then I'll have the ID and then some more um, space or punctuation like this. So um, show name now, um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Show name now is outputting the ID for each, for each object as well as its name. And if I run that, um, so show name is running down here. If I run this program, it's saying object ID naught, um, I am a thing. There's the static description and instant state again, Bob and um, second object id1 again instance data i am a thing static data and then the name sue which is instance data um, so um, it's quite a lot to take in um, for one tutorial but um, i'm going to um, put this code on caveofprogramming.com which is all one word so you can take a look at your leisure if you want to and um, the approach I always take myself to learning this kind of stuff is just basically use it, you know, copy it and paste it in, get it to work. And after a while, you sort of start to get a feel for it. And if it seems at all obscure now, um, after just using it and working with it a bit, you'll start to see that it's, um, it's pretty simple, really. It's not too bad. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at um, string builder, string buffer, and some advanced string formatting, which we'll need before we go on to um, some more stuff to do with um, objects. So join me again then, uh, and until then, happy coding.